Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, it's me. Hi, this is Sandy from Canadian Blockhouse calling. How are you today? I'm okay. I just, uh, I'm doing these today. So uh, I got up and uh, it's not very warm here. So uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about going back to bed. Well, that's a really good idea. So as long as you can hang tight with me for 15 or 20, then you can go back to bed. Okay. <laughs> Sound good? Okay, I have to tell you first that... Yeah, I want to ask you actually, can you hear me okay? I'm fine, yeah. Okay, perfect. And uh, I also want to tell you first that this call may be recorded for quality and control purposes. Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding, but I am recording you, so I just wanted you to know that. Um, okay. I first have to tell you that I'm a long time fan of yours since like the 1990s. Um, I still remember the first time I saw you on TV. I believe it was your first performance at the Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal. And wow. uh, yeah, a long time ago. Um, you made me laugh so hard. I was gasping for air. My stomach was killing me. I had tears of laughter mixed with mascara running down my cheeks. And I may have actually peed my pants at that moment. Oh my God. I was a right mess. Really? And I've never forgotten it. I was so, I was just hysterical. So, um, anyways, from that point on, I was hooked on your comedy routine, and I've watched you on TV every chance I get. Oh. Yeah, so I'm a huge fan, but, uh, but enough. Fantastic. Everybody goes, yeah, I've been watching you for years, and reminds me how old I am. But oh. you know what? <laughs> uh, I, I still show up there, and they still come to see me in droves, so I guess I, I guess I've made an impression, huh? Exactly. They, go, they always ask me, how, how do I, how do I relevant and how I've lasted this long it isn't relevant so I'm just funny and that's I'm still right. funny and that, as long as that doesn't go away I think they're going to keep coming you know? absolutely we will for sure I know it now listen um so I enough about me but uh, I wanted to talk about the fact that you're currently on your international man of misery tour performing yeah. in 19 Canadian cities across Canada so my yeah. fir my first question for you is what were you thinking booking a cross Canada tour in February when you could have been surrounded by palm trees and lying poolside in California? Well, I kind of missed the horrible, frigid cold. Actually, the <laughs> reason is I'm actually the international man of stupidity. <laughs> I, think, I think that's the difference. Well, we, just, we like the theme of it being miserable and me being miserable to send me to a miserable time of year because uh, it kind of fits the theme. But people know I'm miserable too in the summer, and we can dump this winter thing any time now. <laughs> yes, I would agree with that for sure. Um, yeah, so, it's crazy. It is, and isn't it? I, you know, my blood is thin, and I can't, I can't, it goes, like I go to Ottawa and I see my mom, and we go outside and she laughs at me because the cold comes right through my pants, like right away, and I refuse to wear long underwear because I'm not that guy. Well, I don't blame you. I don't like wearing those either. <laughs> No, I will not. And I won't wear those snow pants because I don't ski. And I really was counting on the hair on my legs to keep me warm. <laughs> it fails. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Well, we're going to have to get you outfitted for when you come to Ottawa on the 13th. <laughs> I heard it's going to be, because it's me, it's going to be the coldest day of the, of the year, right? It is, Jeremy. It's supposed to be like, it's going to feel like minus 29, I think. That's ridiculous. Yes. You know, Mars is minus 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're pretty Wait, darn close. There's another planet. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so listen, I see you're in Toronto today, right? At Massey Hall? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, I love Massey Hall. I used to stalk 80s new wave bands at Massey Hall when I was a teenager in Toronto, like the Thompson Twins uh, and Depeche Mode. Um, like the big hair, the big hair band? Yes, know? yes, yes, yes. That yeah, was right. back in my day. <laughs> I'm pretty close in age to you, I think, because I'm 48, so I think we're pretty yeah, close in age. you are. Yes. It's the same, it's the same band. That's right? what, that's that's what I band. thought. Really funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Massey Hall is um, a grand old dame of theater halls. Have you performed at Massey Hall before? And where yeah. do you where do you prefer performing more, like in an intimate setting like a comedy club or a larger theater like Massey Hall? Where do you prefer? I make it, I make it intimate anyway, just by the way that I am. And they, people say that it's like you're just 
just having a conversation with someone in the living room, even though it's these big barns. And Massey Hall is great because even though it's huge, it's one of my favorite places because it has a, if you've been there, it has an intimate feel about it. Yes. Because instead of it going far, far back, it goes way, way up so the people are actually closer. Exactly. Very good point. The only problem is more people can see how bald I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, from on top, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So listen, you've um, you've got a lot of great things happening in your life right now. This cross Canada tour with all the new material. You're living the life in L.A. You've got a brand new girlfriend and you've got a brand new puppy, Shackleton. Let's focus on the puppy for a moment. Um, Shackleton, I love the name. How did you come up with that? Uh, Shackleton is named after the uh, famous Antarctic explorer who uh, went up to the Antarctic and discovered, uh, you know, ice or something. Oh. And then we decided uh, I called him that because even as, okay, he was the runt of the litter and uh, oh. there was four of them and uh, he, he was the smallest and at the earliest age was the one that crawled out of, you know, out of the box and started like exploring. He hadn't even opened his eyes yet. Oh, he that... He was moving around. It was like adorable thing, you know? That's an and awesome so that's story. And got the name Shackleton, and then the lady that, that, that you know, she came from her puppies, or her, uh, you know, her dogs, and then said, look, I really want you to have this dog because my old one had passed away, and uh, uh, I just waited like a year and a half, and I said I wasn't going to get another dog, and then she gave me this whole story, and then started sending me pictures, and I just went, all right, I'll take this dog. Oh, it was meant to be. Yeah. Oh, well, I was forced on me anyway, and I have this anxiety <laughs> disorder, so That's... You know, they say that these things calm you down and all this, that, and the other, but he seems to be have as much anxiety as me right now. So <laughs> Oh, that's adorable. Okay. Well, I, I did actually see your interview on Canada AM where you brought Shackleton on the set. And so I wanted to ask you about that. Um, you said that he's a therapy dog for you, and you recently disclosed that you suffer from, it, from anxiety. Um, yeah. Dogs can be amazing that way um, in the way that they can help you with things like that. How does Shackleton help you and your anxiety? Well, first of all, uh, you know, like this. Uh, with the with the uh, with the problem comes you know sort of a low self esteem thing and sometimes you don't really want to go outside that much is the problem you don't really yes. like if I see somebody walking down the street and they're coming towards me on the sidewalk I will actually sometimes cross the street and walk on on the other side of the road. Wow, and that must yeah, be yeah. tough for so you. With the dog, the dog gets me out of bed and the dog gets me up and the dog you know I'll take the dog to walks and stuff and I, I go outside. So, you know, it's very helpful and, and stuff like that. Right, so the dog sort of makes you get up and get out and, and get outside your house. Routine. Yes. You know, there it is. Gives me a routine. And, and when you have somebody or something else re relying on you, I'm especially good with animals. I always have been. So, you know, I, I really look after them uh, 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 very well for some reason. More than people. It's funny that way. You know? uh, well, Shackleton's a lucky dog, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and he tell me... He doesn't know it. <laughs> What's that? He doesn't know it. Oh, he, <laughs> he doesn't know he's it. He's so fast, i got to say, because he's only, he's only three months old. Oh. So I, guess it's a, I guess it's a survival technique. I've never seen, I've never seen a dog run this fast. If he doesn't want you to, to pick him up, you're, he's, he's gone. Oh. He can't get him. It's amazing. <laughs> Little bugger. It's not because I'm older and I can't chase him. Like, even a young guy, like, like my nephews are like, Look at that thing go. <laughs> Puts his tail between his legs and he runs around. My God, it's like a joke. Oh, <laughs> he's smart. It's amazing. It's like a mouse, you know, you can't get him. No, no kidding, <laughs> eh? Um, and that's the game. He wants to play it. You can see his eyes are all lit up, you know, and he's like, he wants to, you know, I can't, I can't compete with you. He's just winning his game. <laughs> <laughs> no, he knows how to get you. He knows. Um, listen, I, I also wanted to know, speaking of Shackleton, does he do any special tri pet tricks? Um, for example, my dog Guinness, she does. Yeah. She actually... Guinness is a great name after the beer. That's hilarious. It is because she's chocolate brown too. So that's exactly oh, why wow, we named her that. Great. That's great. Thank you. That's she sings. Yeah. She sings with John Legend every day. You know who John Legend is? Yes. Okay. Of so she loves his song, um, 
that he sings uh, all of you and so every day I put on his video and she howls along with it and it's the only video she'll howl along with and I what uh, that is. is it the pitch you think in the song you get or what oh I I haven't been able to figure it out but it's so bizarre I just happened to catch it by accident and now she literally comes over to me every day and jumps up on my lap and she's staring at my computer and she wants me to put on this video so, and yet, John doesn't know that he sings with her every day. I haven't been able to get his attention on this one yet. But, so back to Shackleton. Does Shackleton do any special pet tricks yet? Well, he's too young, so right now, all his greatest pet trick is, uh, 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 he pretty much, uh, uh, t like, it's the tug of war thing. Like, he'll run up with something in his mouth and he'll just flip it at you. Oh, yes, so that's a big one. Hand. I want to I wanna play the tug of war. That's all he does yet, so oh, far. Oh, absolutely. Well, you'll have... You'll have to work on his routine then. Everything he's, he's seen for the first time. And I brought him out on, he's already been, at, he's already been on uh, television a few times, and he handled it pretty well. He's already been on stage in front of 2,000 people, and he oh. handled that well. You know? Wow. So he's learning that uh, he's, a, he's a little bit privileged and stuff, you know, right now. So he's, he's kind <laughs> of uh, getting used to everything for the first time. And what they do is these little dogs, when they're, People go, oh, he's shaking, he's really nervous. But then they told me um, uh, that, that because they're so small, they, that's how they process information. So oh. He's learning all the time. Really oh, cool. that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't and, know and that. guiding them in, in a way. So he's going to be a particularly miserable little dog, I think. <laughs> it sure <laughs> sounds like it. Oh, he's my goodness. He's a little standoff. It's just like <laughs> Careful, he's going to need a retainer soon. <laughs> yeah, he's going to have a rider. Exactly. This could turn out to be real miserable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to your anxiety. Um, leading up to your shows, how do you deal with the anxiety? Do you have a game plan you follow? No, because it's so in and out. You can't really, for me, it's really strange. It's, you never know. Like, uh, I had it real bad before Hamilton. I didn't have it at all in Kitchener. There's no extra the night before. There's no explanation. I don't know. I deal with it as it comes. You know? Wow. And my brother's here. Uh, he's a psychologist, and he uh, he always travels with me at the beginning of my tour. And then when I come through the Ontario thing, because he lives here, right. he pretty much gets my head in the game right before I go on stage, and that helps when I'm having some kind of, you know, debilitating garbage going on in my head before i got to get out there. But usually... Uh, as a matter of fact, all the time when I actually walk out there, it goes away, which is why I'm able to do this uh, for a living still, or I wouldn't be able to. I know other people, it's the actual act of doing it, and when they get yes. the anxiety, for me, it's the stuff before. Wow, well, you just answered my next question. I was basically going to ask you, um, you know, like on those horrible days, because some days with anxiety can be so horrible, I wanted to uh, know how you get through those days and actually get on stage to make others laugh, because... So many people that suffer with anxiety could never do such a thing. No, I'm really lucky. And my analyst in LA has told me that before, so that's how it's done. And just I'm lucky that that's how it affects me. It affects everybody differently, you know? It's it does. Generalized anxiety disorder is what it is. And uh, they sent me to a psychiatrist when I was a kid because I had problems when I was a kid. And this guy, because it was like back in the 80s, like we were talking about, he's their 70s. He said, uh, my parents, he's eating too much ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much they knew back then. That, that must so be the problem with my not mother. Not only was he wrong, but I didn't get to have ketchup for a couple of weeks. Well, that's quite horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, okay, so, and um, something else I want to know. Is it true that you don't follow a script on stage, that you just get no, up? No, I don't, and... that's the truth. You I, don't. Uh, I go out with a loose diagram, uh, sort of a notes of what I, what I was going to cover, and then I pull stuff down and pick and choose uh, out of the air, because, again, giving, working in a stringent order like a Seinfeld or a Louis C.K. that does it in the right order and everything, that would just give me too much anxiety. So just forget it. You right. Know, that's, I don't even try to do that, which means it's an open show and it's never the same twice. And that's why people keep coming back to see it. That's right. It's never the same. I can't remember the last way I did it. And that's what makes it so good. Yeah. Well, again, it's part of the debilitating thing, which is weird because, <laughs> you know, without it, I might not have been as successful 
local comedian. But Absolutely, no, that's true, eh? So um, you have a very unique way of speaking to the crowd, which is one of the things I love about you. Um, it's your mannerisms on stage. It's how you hide behind your hand, that sort of thing. How did you come up with that style? Like, where did it originate? Again, insecurity, not trusting myself, trying to catch the words before they come out of my mouth. Uh, wow. Having low self-esteem, that sort of thing, probably. I never would have guessed that. I mean, it, it's a fan. Yeah. I love it. I just like that's part of what makes me laugh when I see you on stage. I just love your mannerisms. Yeah, what's he even doing out there? You know, I yes. know it's weird. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everything I do is wrong for comedy. I turn my back on the audience. I put my hand in front of my face. I mumble. It's not supposed to work. <laughs> <laughs> but it does. So, hey, keep at it. Um, okay, so I'm going to put you on the spot here for a bit. What, okay. what Canadian city has the best audience and what Canadian city has the worst, in your the opinion? The best audience of all would have to be probably, hmm, God, there's a lot of them tied, but I would have to lean with Ottawa at the National Arts Centre because it's, it's my home place. Woohoo! I'm, I'm supported there. I mean, that, the National Arts Centre has been sold out for a while completely now. So Yes, I know that. Me. So there, probably. And then the worst uh, uh, little club I did once in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Oh, my gosh. Is uh, somehow worse than South Battleford. I think the Battlefords <laughs> are just a shitty place to be. <laughs> I'll omit that from this interview. We won't talk about that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you are by far one of my favorite Canadian comedians. Um, can you name one of your favorite Canadian comedians and tell us why they're one of your faves? Canadian comedian? Yeah, yeah. Dave Broadfoot, I think, is the guy that I, when I was a kid, that I, uh, you know... But oh, he's awesome. already by then, and uh, I, I watched him, and, and he was on those old uh, Air Force things. He would yes! He would just stand-up comedy, and he wouldn't really be in the sketches. He would just do his own thing, and I thought that was really cool. I used to watch that. Uh, that he didn't use uh, anybody else, and he would dress up like a bounty and stuff like that. And, <laughs> I was a kid and it made me laugh, and then... He, he gave out an award. He gave an award to me once. That guy. He did. The Dave Broadfoot uh, Genius Award, and it was a comedy award that he gave me. And I was like the third guy to ever get it, and I think it still goes on. Look it up. I don't. I don't know the exact name of that award, but it's something like if you put Dave Broadfoot Award, it'll come up. I remember reading about that. I just didn't realize that he actually gave it to you, which is fantastic. No, he did it because he's too old, but he's still alive. You know oh. that, right? He is? So, and he just doesn't travel that much, but it's his thing. And uh, I remember uh, uh, getting an email going, you know, from him going, congratulations. And once he came to see me when I was at the, uh, oh, I just, uh, I did a, like years ago, I did a thing at Yuck Yucks when I was first breaking and he came to, he came to see me. And that was like a big thrill because I'd seen him when I was, I met, I was like eight. Wow. Eight, That's like amazing. That, you know? That's first comic I ever really saw. That's amazing. Well, uh, speaking of Canadian comics, I've got another question for you here. Pete Zedlocker, the only other Canadian comedian to make me pee my pants besides Mike McDonald. I believe you played the Halifax Comedy Festival with, festival with him one year. Have, I did. Have you ever seen his Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? No, I never have. He's never done Arnold for me, no. Oh, you, oh, need, you need to look that up on YouTube. It is the funniest no, thing. Oh, like you did it on stage? Um, yeah, I don't know where the performance was, but I found it on YouTube one day, and oh my gosh, that made me laugh. So I just, I was curious if you'd ever seen that. No, and he's a friend of mine, and I never have. I have. Uh, he went through some bad shit, and then we arranged, like I arranged some, uh, like a big thing at the Laugh Back Factory, like a big fundraiser for him in in, uh, in Hollywood at the Laugh Factory, and I got all these stars to come and pack the place and we just gave him all the money because he was going through that, uh, oh. that operation thing where he needed a new, uh, well, you know the story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did that, Mike, and we're, you know, we've been, I, it's like, again, he, when I first started comedy at the clubs, at the Yuck Yucks Club, he was like the king of the, of the club, you know what I mean? Oh, Mike, and, yes, definitely. So he was, yeah, and right from the beginning, he kind of took me under his wing and like we hung out. He was a good guy. 
Oh, that's fantastic. So now listen, I have a few more questions, but I know I'm sort of out of time. Do I have a little more time or do I have to go? Yeah, yeah, we can go. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So you were born in Ottawa. Yay. And uh, cause that's where I live right now. And, um, although I have to say when I was doing a little bit of research online, I read somewhere that somebody was claiming that you were born in South Africa. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> Africa. Oh, you my were? parents were one when we moved. Uh, you know, uh, I said I don't agree even at one that with this apartheid situation, and we moved to Canada. <laughs> 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 the baby's on to something. So oh. I was actually born there, but I don't have an accent because the, the time spent was zero, you know? Exactly. So you, you pretty much grew up in Ottawa then? I'm Canadian. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Phew, okay. Um, so, your favorite memory of Ottawa, what would your favorite memory be of growing up here? Uh, probably Malham's Smoke Shop, which was a confectionery on the corner of Wellington and Parkdale. Probably wow. not there anymore, but that's where we would go, me and my sister. And this proves that I had an anxiety disorder. We would go to that store to get, like, candy and stuff at a young age. And I would send her into the store, tell her what I wanted, send her into the store, because I didn't want to talk to the guy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right. So you sent your sister in to do the dirty work. Yeah, and she did it. And now she's incredibly gregarious, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, you know, I did you ever go to the Super X as a kid? The what? The oh, yeah. The exhibition, the X? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went there. Absolutely, man. That was a... Boy, you saw some weird-looking people with, you know, uh, uh, that should have been in prison running those rides. <laughs> I, I remember that. I remember the X. Yeah, yeah. What was your favorite ride? Uh, probably that one where you stand up and, and, and there, I don't know what it's called. I tilt a whirl, I think, where it, where you stand with your back against the thing. Oh, you yes. And you hold on and then it just spins really fast. That yes, one. that's awesome. That's one of my favorites too. <laughs> I think they called it the puke machine because most of the people puked and like on that thing. But for some reason I didn't. I could handle spinning. I didn't like being... I didn't like going up and down as much as I did around. Yes, you could handle the spinning part. Yeah, I was always afraid that somebody was going to be sick on me on that ride. <laughs> yeah, it was called the Tooth Machine, I remember. Yes, I totally remember that. Um, have you ever had a beaver tail? Yeah, I did on the canal once. I went skating, which was, uh, which was kind of weird. I went skating and I had one there. It's the sugary dough thing, right? Yes, yes, yes. Do you remember? I don't really, I don't really like it, and I also don't like uh, the... Uh, Fries with the diarrhea on it. That was the scene. I don't like that either. Oh my god. Well, you just. No, I, I don't like it. <laughs> you just ruined one of my questions there with that one. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to change into something else here. Um, as you know, I'm a blogger. My life is immersed in social media. So I want to ask right. you. I want to ask you a few social media questions, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Is it really you behind your social media channels? Well, you I have help with uh, Shannon, who, who knows more about it than me. But yeah, if, I, if you're asking, am I answering the questions to people on Facebook and Twitter? Yeah. The answer is yes. Awesome. Most, that, of the, most of the time, yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Um, I wrote a post about vague booking, clickbait, and other social media pet peeves which caught the attention of CTV's The Social, and they featured, uh, it, on, it, they featured it on their show. Um, be honest, have you ever vague booked? And can you tell us about it? Have I ever what? Vague booked. Do you know what that is? Uh-uh, tell me what it is. Okay, so like on Facebook, a lot of times people will vague book, meaning that they'll provide you with just enough information to pique your interest about something, but then leave you hanging by not telling you the whole story. So, do you understand? You know, to, to, what, for, oh, to keep you coming back, you mean? Well, yeah, or, you know, like, oh, it was such a bad day today, I can't believe what happened. And then that's all they say. But they don't, and they don't tell their friends what happened, they don't tell their friends... No, I don't really do that because uh, I, I, that never occurred to me. No, I don't. I usually will do a joke. Or something, you know what I mean? Like oh, this, this, and this happened, and then there's a joke. So no, not not usually would I just leave them 
And that seems kind of awfully rude and mean to do. <laughs> Absolutely right? like, it is. I'm it not feeling well today. I'm going to jump off a bridge. Exactly. Then, is the guy dead? Is he? That's horrible. <laughs> yes, exactly. But believe it or not, a lot of people do that. I never do that. Okay, I'm really happy to hear that. That's great. <laughs> okay. All right, so something I recently asked my readers on Facebook about, why do Canadians have such a dislike for Canadian band Nickelback? Yet they sell millions of recordings, they sell out their concerts. Are you a Nickelback fan, and how do you I feel? I don't mind Nickelback. I don't really understand it. There are some Canadian bands that's what I don't, that I'm not partial to. Maybe it's a music thing. I don't know. Maybe there's something about Canadians that it's like when somebody gets too famous, they kind of turn away from them. Yes. Not particularly like Justin Bieber either, do they? No. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's getting too big, you know, for his, for his, uh, for, for his underpants. I, I don't really know what it is. Uh, maybe, that's, maybe the band's going through a bit of that, I, I guess. Well, that's sort of... Self-effacing nation. Yep, I agree with you 100%. Um, now, there are a lot of trolls online, and do you know what I mean uh, by trolls? Yes, I do. Okay. What's the most miserable thing someone has ever said to you online? I can't because it's, 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 uh, it's anti-Semitic and racial and everything, but I guess, I guess oh my uh, gosh. The, the more popular and famous I get, uh, those, those show up a little more frequently. Wow! That's incredible. Yeah. yeah, well, people can be pretty nasty online, so it doesn't oh, really surprise me. the police me. already, you know, because you send them to that thing, and they already, you know, they log the thing, and they, they already told me that half, that half these people don't even know who I am. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. So, okay, um, am I still doing okay for time here? Sure, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, my real aim with this interview was to steer it a little bit outside the box, so to speak. Um, uh, I want to see if I can make you laugh a little bit. So, okay. um, not with the first question here, but you live in LA now. Um, that's correct, right? Yep. Okay. What Canadian thing do you miss the most when you're in LA? Is it the double uh, double or chips. what's that? Ketchup chips. Really? Yeah, they don't have them. Oh, they I've, they I've heard that. Those. You're lucky to find salt and vinegar. They don't know what they're doing with chips there. Forget about pizza or all dressed they don't have that they don't have harvey's the morons you know harvey's hamburgers oh that's my favorite i know yeah, me too. oh they don't have it. so do you always have a harvey's burger when you come to canada yeah i run to harvey's are you kidding i just you know <laughs> my god i know i know they don't have the good burgers they don't no have the good chips so those are the things you know yeah you i got a Mars bar you gotta have a snickers they don't have that no, the, yeah, they don't no. have a lot of the candy bars. They don't have uh, the McCreamy McToffee there. What's it called? Uh, Scott Macintosh. And oh, thing. They don't yes. Have that. I haven't had um, that in a long time. You know the red thing that you would smash on the table? That thing? Yes. Pick the pieces up that. They don't have that. <laughs> wow, that's a good that's memory. I forgot about that. It's completely uncivilized. It's a third world country. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, so I understand you used to play hockey and that you're a Leafs fan. Yes, I am. Okay. I played hockey when I was a kid, yeah. That... I, I was pretty good at that. I'm a Leafs fan, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. I still watch them because I got the satellite, right? So, oh. So I, watch, I still, well, not this year because they're just so awful. They actually <laughs> have come out and gone, we're supposed to lose. <laughs> I, I know. So I'm, I'm out for this season. But, <laughs> Awesome. Well, don't tell anyone, but I'm a huge Leafs fan too, even though I live in Ottawa, so don't tell anybody. But um, well, Here's the thing. I was from Ottawa too, but there was no Senators when we were kids. So you no. had to pick either the Canadians or the Leafs, and that's why I'm a Leafs fan, because my brother picked the Canadians. That's it. That's simple. Yes, I read that your brother is a Habs fan. Um, yeah. Did that cause a little sibling rivalry in the Hots household? Oh, God. Waking up caused a sibling Uh oh. He was three years older and I followed him around. Oh. Uh, and he didn't want anyone following him around. So that's how that works, brother. Exactly. Well, and speaking of your brother, I need you to settle this once and for all, although I think you did in a previous um, comment that you made today. But is Kenny Hotz your brother? <laughs> no. Okay. No, he's not, he's I, not related to me at all. He's, he's not related. Not a chance, but we are friends. I know who he is. 
Oh, okay. I just, I had to ask because I've often wondered that, yet I never saw it printed anywhere and I didn't know. No. Oh, is that me? No, that's me. Oh, do you have to go? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what, is there any more questions? Um, let me just see here. Um, um, oh yeah, I just wanted to say, so you're performing in Kingston, Ontario, um, the day after you're here in Ottawa on Valentine's Day. Kingston right. is my hometown. That's where I was born and raised. Yeah. Okay. So I've got an insider tip for you. If you have time, go have a beer and some dragon wings and fries at the Kingston Brew Pub downtown. What's it called? It's called the Kingston Brew Pub. Okay. And have one of their, they've got beer, their own beer that they make, and they make yeah. dragon wings and fries, and they're spectacular. What are dragon wings? Like big chicken wings? Yeah, they're just big chicken wings, but they make their own sauce, and they're delicious. Okay, well, I love chicken wings, so I'll go there for So sure. there you go. You can try that out. So, um, so anyways. Any just... other tips about Kingston, like avoid the prison? <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Stay far away, because there's like six of them there. <laughs> yep, there's a lot of prisons there. But you know what? You're actually safer living in Kingston than on the outskirts because, you know, when they have a prison break, they, the prisoners leave town. They don't want to stick around, right? So it's perfectly safe to live in Kingston. <laughs> Jesus, you mean there's breaks? They actually get out of those places? Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes they do, believe it or not. Oh, Christ. Yep. Well, all right. <laughs> so, uh, so listen, so now that I've gotten to know you much better, does this mean, like, that we're friends now? Will I be getting an invite to the Hots Mansion in L.A. next Thanksgiving to celebrate the pilgrims and their buckle hats? Does that sound okay. familiar? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that the other day, and I was killing myself laughing. I live in a mansion, I guess, you know? I live in a nice house, but I wouldn't call it a mansion. <laughs> Besides, I think Shackleton would, wouldn't even let you in. The one thing about him I've noticed, uh, even though he's just three months and he's really little, he's incredibly uh, protective of me. Oh, I believe that. In the that. hotel room here, like when he heard the maze in the hall, he got up and his ears were up and he started like making sounds like that, like he didn't want him to come through the door. You know? Oh, I bet he's a tough little thing. He would protect you yeah. in a second. Yeah. It's amazing how quickly we bonded, too. It's really cool. You know, it's fantastic. Well, I'm a huge... His hair hasn't even grown in yet because he's a long hair and it doesn't even have it yet. It's weird. What kind of like, dog he is he? He's bald in places. <laughs> what kind of dog is he? He's like a chihuahua mix thing, a little thing, you know, like he... a small dog mix. I, I've seen his picture, but I didn't know. I, he looked like a chihuahua, but I wasn't sure if he was, you know. Yeah, but he is. Awesome. Well, listen, at the very least, I just want to ask you if you'll promise to come back and see us in Ottawa soon because I missed out on getting tickets to your show and that's made me miserable. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I, maybe you can get them through uh, if, there are, if there is a pair there together left. I don't even know. It, doesn't, it says online no, but that sometimes is bullshit. They hold them back. Oh, are so you serious? To, uh, Lisa or Talar there at the, at the publicity department. You know them, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe they can hook you up, but I can't make any promises because they all mine are gone. My personals are gone, and because my family's from there, and it, it, sometimes they hold. So ask them. Okay. Know, maybe, maybe you'll be able to slip in. I will do that. Thank you so much, because I I found out too late about it. I'm like, oh no! I, there were a couple single seats left that I could see, but of course I don't want to go by myself. So. <laughs> ask, ask them sometimes. There's pair here and a pair there that they, they hold, you know, so just do that and then maybe you'll be able to come in. Awesome. I will do that. Thank you so much. So, well, no before this turns into 101 questions with Jeremy Hotz, what a miserably long interview, <laughs> I will wrap things up by saying a big, big thank you for taking the time to chat with me, Jeremy. Um, you've made my day anything but miserable uh, and it's okay. been absolutely <laughs> fantastic. All right, I'm going to go lie down now. You have a nice day, and hopefully you get into that Ottawa thing, and I, I, I see you there uh, after the show. Okay, and thanks again, Jeremy. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye.